call the meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> First on the agenda tonight is recognition of Feed the Hungry with Principal of Riddle, Luke Bernacchi. I'd like to uh, introduce Scott Sterk too, um, but what we'd like to talk about is a program, and I don't know, Scott, I know ever since I've been at Riddle we've been doing it, and I don't know if we've done it longer, the Feed My Starving Children program at, at Mill Creek Church. Um, my first year at Riddle was just the fourth grade students were involved in working with Scott and his team. We've started involving the whole school, uh, this year we also involved the National Junior Honor Society from the middle school and I'm not sure if anybody from the high school came over as well. I think probably the Athletic Student Council and I don't know if any other groups came as well. Yeah, so in, in addition to the Riddle kids, we had uh, Saturday morning the whole Rochester High School football team. Uh, Friday night we had uh, Coach Brown brought the soccer team and we had boys and girls tennis there. and. Um, it's like uh, like Luke said, this is the sixth year for the event. We've always had a little bit of school involvement. It's kind of been growing and growing. And uh, my wife, Stephanie, the fourth grade teacher, Riddle, and she says to me one time, hey, you're in charge of this. Can we just bring all the, the whole Riddle staff and kids and everyone? And I was like, holy cow, how are we going to do that? And uh, she got with Luke, and uh, he's been supportive. The, the teachers there have been so supportive. You know, I'm a teacher myself. I know how precious classroom instructional time is so for them to take time to do this is just a huge thing and as we talk about it, our goal is always let's get the kids in there get them the experience you know try to build the capacity for them to experience showing empathy to someone who maybe not might not have what they have but they always blow us away so I want to share a couple numbers with the just the riddle kids this year they packed 36,288 meals that's probably two or three times what we would even uh, hope for or dream for and uh to be able to tell those kids, like, don't let anyone ever tell you you're too young to make a difference. Okay, so you're the last ones to touch these bags, and two, three, four weeks from now, kids somewhere around the world are gonna open these, and so from your hands almost directly to their hands. So I just really appreciate Mr. Bernacki, the whole Riddle staff, the, the high school kids, with the Junior Honor Society from the middle school, and uh, Mrs. Snyder brought a class from the high school, and. It's just been such, a, it's just this huge, it's the biggest, as far as we know, we haven't really actually looked into it, but we claim it's the biggest volunteer uh, opportunity in Fulton County each year. And the, the Riddle kids especially kind of, it's, it's fun. You know, the, the football team comes and they have a great time and different clubs come, but to bring the whole student body, you're getting those kids that might not have that chance. Maybe their parents don't uh, have the ability to have them go serve for someone else. So. We think that's important, and uh, I'm just here to express my thanks for Rochester Community Schools and their support and involvement in this. Thank you for allowing us to be part of that. And thanks, Scott. Goes right along with our mission, learn, grow, and give, and it really does impact our students. They love it. And plus, uh, like Scott said, in three or four weeks, we get some feedback on where this actually went, so it goes with uh, some of our curriculum as well. The, the students love to see, okay, where did these or, you know, our boxes end up at where in the world and things like that. And they look forward to it every year. And it is a tremendous event. Every, everybody loves it. So we do thank you for involving us in that. So Scott, do you have a number how many total you got back? So for the, the whole event this year was, it was the second biggest one we've ever done was 163,296 meals. And the, the number we, we sent home with each shift and at the end of the event was, that's about 450 kids who are gonna be alive one year from now because this community just came together and said, look what we can do. It's probably I've been there with the football team and classrooms both, and it's really neat to see you guys do that. And like Janet said, and on behalf of the board, thank you for including us. Absolutely. Thanks, <coughs> uh, with that, we will recess the regular board meeting and open a public hearing on the proposed superintendent's contract. Uh, Ted, where do you want me to go for you? Just allow the public comment? 
Right. The state law requires that before the superintendent's contract can be renewed or a new superintendent's contract can be established, that the terms of the contract must be published and uh, uh, then the uh, published and in a notice of public hearing. Uh, that has been done. Julie has the publisher's affidavit there that will be presented to the board. The, uh, then once that's done, then the board uh, listens to the public. If there are concerns or questions, then you look at it. And uh, you cannot adopt the contract tonight. You have to wait at least uh, seven days before you can take any action on the contract. So next time you meet, it's anticipated you'll take action either on the terms proposed or on alternative terms if the public convinces you to make some changes. In that case, if I haven't said all right, we've opened the public hearing, and Julie, we've met all those requirements through timelines and notices of paper, correct? Is there any public comment on the proposed superintendent contract? Any board members comment on this proposed superintendent contract? I'll go one more time with the public for proposed con or comments on the proposed superintendent contract. In that case, there is no public comment. Have I given due diligence to allow people time to speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, if there is no public comment, one last time, I'll give you the third chance if there's any comment. Then we'll adjourn the public hearing on the superintendent's proposed contract, and I think we'll vote on this at the regularly public board meeting. Well, they're all public, but the board meeting in October, I believe. Uh, you can, or at the special session in October. Oh, we, uh, okay. If you have a if we do regular it. board meeting, at the, or a special board meeting at the special session. Very well. In that case, the uh, uh, public hearing on the proposed superintendent contract is adjourned. Financial report. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we budget. We public, hearing hearing budget. Yeah. public hearing on the budget. That's the second public comment in it. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to reopen the public hearing and have public comment on the budget. Is there any public comment on the budget that we are proposing for the 2000? 1920 mm -hmm. school year. Mr. Gard, you just walked in, so I'll give you the chance. You may not have heard me. Any comment on the contract for the, or I'm sorry, for the budget for the 2019 20 school year? It's open for public hearing. Any public comment? Any board members? One last time for public comment on the uh, proposed budget for 2019 or 20, yeah, 2019 to 2020. There is no public comment, so we'll consider the public hearing adjourned. And now we will, since that is adjourned, we're going to resume the regular board meeting and we are going to the financial report. <coughs> Um, claims, uh, claim number 140.55 through 142.57, totaling $2,113,985.64. Um, for your approval. <coughs> Is there any objection from the board to go through all the financial or the claims and the funds reports here? There's an objection, please let me know. If not, if you would top of this, go through all three. Okay. The, uh, Payrolls for, uh, in front of you, uh, 831, uh, $412,000, $962.57. Uh, September 14th, $444,807.70, two payrolls. Um, funds report, uh, general fund uh, receipts during August of $1 million. $8,798.80. Uh, expenses uh, during August, $1,269,195.33. So up the balance of $350,621.45 in the general fund. The reason you're seeing the in increase on that line would be the layover in the period and actually um, going through, through three payrolls, yes. but where the funding came and where the payrolls came mm -hmm. out. So, and then um, another thing, while we've got prospective board members here, another thing that I tried to provide and Todd tries to provide to the board are anticipated um, 
funds and balances. So right now they can tell you, and I've got copies of the budget here if you'd like to see how we go through that process and have that to take with you or have questions. Um, we're running about $43,000 ahead of projected right now in the general fund. And a lot of that I attribute to the administrative team making sure we're not duplicating services, to, to Julie and Brenda making sure that we're getting proper payroll, those types of things. So we're running about 40000 ahead of where we thought we would be even after the three pay period. Okay, in the uh, debt service fund, uh, there was receipts in August of $8,049.90 and no expenses. Um, the cash balance uh, at the end of August is $2,269,344.69. Uh, Capital Projects Fund uh, had um, receipts of $5,940.32. Um, there were expenses in August of $192,446.26, which left us with a balance of $936,943.68. <coughs> Transportation fund, um, receipts of $3,963.97, expenses of $51,596.29. So left a balance of $1,064,371.22. Lastly, the bus replacement fund, uh, revenue of $664.54, no expenses. Um, pushed our balance to $273,045.55. And again, first of next year, it goes to three funds rather than five. Right. So what I was going to share, I know that with the um, debate coming on, I think that obviously Jenny and Tom are in a really good position in regards to understanding budgets, those types of things. But if any of you have questions over budgets or ESSA or how the funding is going to change come January 1st or how you go from meal and conversation to becoming policy, all of those things, I'd be willing to schedule those times and sit down with you and try to help you uh, understand that process and be better prepared as you go through that. I'd be honored to do that. And I think teachers would tell you that you learn the most when you're able to teach it to somebody else. So I brought some examples for you to obviously take and look through. But if you have questions, I'd be honored to help you work through the multitude of information. Again, board members, any objection to voting on the financial report, all three? things at once. Any questions, comments for Todd or Chairman? In that case, is there a motion to approve financial report B sections one? And I guess it'd be consent item. No, nope, it would be numbers five, six, and seven. So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the financial report sections five, six, and seven, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Consent items, minutes of August 20th, 2018 regular board meeting. Again, is there any objection to voting on all three of these at once? Are there any comments, deletions, additions, subtractions, corrections to any of these three reports? In that case, is there a motion to approve the consent items number one, two, and three, the minutes of the August 20th regular board meeting, the minutes of the September 4th special board meeting, and the minutes of the September 4th study session. So moved. Motion made by Sandy. I'll second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the consent items C, one, two, and three, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Student and stakeholder focus donations. And I have those. We have a long list. Number one, Blue Dragon Taekwondo, $900 for RHS Trek. Fort County, back, Fort County Pack a Backpack, 10 backpacks with miscellaneous supplies for each school, High, Middle, Riddle, and Columbia. Stephanie Barkman, two library books in memory of Kate Gosher Camp. Laura Ricketts, sweatpants to RMS nurse for student needs. Northern Indiana Community Foundation, $1,000 pop-up grant to RHS Robotics Club. Shepherds, $6,940 for a drive-a-thon to athletics. Wilson's Fertilizer, $100 to the FFA for the pork chop dinner. 
Big R, $50 FFA for the pork chop dinner. Trinity United Methodist Children, or Women, Trinity United Methodist Women, $50 for the high school student in need fund. Disciple Women, First Christian Church, Rochester to Columbia, school supplies. Hope Shally, $25 for the FCCLA. Dairy Queen Sponsor Night, $181.24 for the FCCLA. Mary Henson Friends, four boxes of school supplies for Columbia and Riddle, two boxes each. Zimmerman Funeral Home, $250 for a trauma backpack. <coughs> Wilson Fertilizer and Grain, $250 for a trauma backpack. And the Tom Wilson Memorial Fund, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, $250 for a trauma backpack. As always, I want to make note on behalf of the board, we thank all the groups and people individually has punched. I realize there's been one more added. Well, and then I always check with Candy to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I hear some specific checkpoint as well. It takes many eyes and ears on every situation. And we didn't want to forget fine rides, five hundred dollars for school. Um, any school needs that they said if if principals, counselors see that students need tennis shoes or money for a field trip or um, eyeglasses, those types of things. So that would just be a request from the building principal or counselor. Um, we have the fun line over at central office and they want us to honor those requests until it reaches 500. So both individually <laughs> as individuals and businesses and collectively as a whole, thank you very much on behalf of the board and Rochester Community School Corporation for those donations. A lot of things we can't do but on behalf of the community we can now. So thank you very much. Any board members want to comment on that? What's pop up? I believe it's just the community foundation this year in honor of their 25th anniversary is that correct yeah. 25th is awarding grants in a pop-up kind of style that people don't have to apply <coughs> for they just go and say here's money to uh, okay. all right thank you um the shepherds was seven thousand dollars seven thousand dollars for the drive and phone that's what the check Austin just for. rounded it up 160 dollars yep. huh yeah that was presented at the homecoming on Friday night. So. But again, for all, some are bigger than others, but all that are important to us. So thank you very much, both individually and collectively, for those donations. Is there a motion to approve the donations as presented? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the donations as presented, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Overnight field trips for the National Junior Honor Society, FFA Soil Judging, and the National FFA Convention. And if there's no objection from the board, it's under one consent item, but we would handle them as a whole unless someone has an objection. And all of these are traditional uh, field trips. I, I know that Oscar, I think, has a volleyball game tonight, but NJHS, that's a trip now, and we've gone with the same company. I believe this will be the third year in a row and have had a great deal of success. And um, I try not to, to go into this too much, but Dryden had a very good time. It was well received. Um, it's well put on. So they're proposing going <laughs> with the same uh, company, the same service, and providing that same opportunity to NJHS kids. And then the two uh, FFA ones are, again, those traditional yearly conferences that allow students the opportunity to engage in leadership, to meet other FFA members, to build those connections, to, to learn from each other. and and to share what we're doing here as well in a project style format. Didn't somebody say Dark Brooks is going to sing at that convention? Yes. So they'd really be mad if we turned <laughs> yes. that one out. Maybe we not in FFA though. I know. Yeah. So I've done the NJHS trip and the two small bus seats are not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> any comments or questions, remarks for Jana about any of these three field trips? And there is no objection to combining the three in one vote. In that case, is there a motion to approve the overnight field trips for NJHS, FFA Soil Judging, and the National FFA Convention? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving all three field trips, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries five to zero. Faculty and staff focus. Okay, now I'm going to read these, so if there's more to add, let me know, okay? I've got two pages. Thank you. Staff, faculty and staff focus the personnel report. I have two pages. Just one. Excuse me here for a second. I pulled up and cross check against my. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
So, the personnel report. Hiring Hannah Shipley, substitute for Linda Arnett's maternity leave at Riddle Special Needs. Dawn Schrader, Columbia Special Needs Preschool Instructional Assistant. Assignment, Sally Dunwoody, the RMS High Ability Coordinator. Resignation, Tracy Mappin, Columbia Instructional Assistant, effective September 14, 2018. And Beth Bickles, Columbia Instructional Assistant, effective October 1, 2018. For fall intercession, Katie Sanchez for Riddle, Nikki Overmeyer for Riddle, Angie Smith for Riddle, Tracy Monicle for Riddle Instructional Assistant, Deb Wolford for high, high School Math, and Madison Sweeney for High School English. Athletic coaching recommendations, Ray Davis, girls, varsity, I'm sorry, girls, girls Basketball Varsity Assistant, Austin Onnefeld, Girls Basketball JV Coach, Allison Butler, Driving Coach, and that'll be a shared stipend with Lisa Andrews. And added today at 3 o'clock, hiring Michelle Mendoza for Columbia Instructional Assistant, Fall Intercession, Bernie Meunier, Middle School, Kenneth Hughes, Middle School, Joanna T. Walt, Instructional Assistant, and the Middle School Club Sponsors. I'll see the attached there. There it is. Here they are. For Champions Together, Dan Bailey, one full stipend. And also for Champions Together, Marty Meunier, one full stipend. Uh, 70 students on multiple subcommittees, created a leadership team. They're doing tremendous work with that program. Championship mornings, Bryce Roberts, one full stipend. Uh, that's where attendance is doubled and students come in weekly from the physical education side of it. And then Kyle Bernardis resignation for student council. And they are recommending Pam Brower and Lori Long to split the student council position. Yeah. I think for clarification, Clint and I had this conversation, but just to make sure we're transparent, the uh, middle school, the collective bargaining agreement calls for six uh, ECA or six club activities, and so we went through um, with Brenda and made sure and confirmed that this would still fall within <coughs> that uh, six clubs that, that they can run out of the CBA. They had some that they no longer carry in these that they're replacing with. Any questions for Mrs. Vance on the personnel report? In that case, is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given? So moved. Motion made by Stacy. Second. Second by Jenny. All in, in favor of approving the personnel report as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Uh, approval of administrative contracts. Has everyone on the board that has required, we've all gotten copies that get a chance to review those to your satisfaction? Any questions or comments from Mrs. Vance on the approval of administrative contracts? I'm assuming the difference in format is because the principals, it's an addendum to their contract and the others, it's a yearly based contract. Correct, and that's something that we worked with Ted and Rachel on just to make sure that yeah. Traditionally, Rochester, not very many schools anymore, but uh, Rochester gave non-teacher-based administrators uh, addendums to a non-existent teacher contract, which really didn't make a whole lot of sense. We ran into a couple of uh, confusing moments about that, and so we modified it over to a simple employment contract for either one year or two years, uh, depending upon the position in the uh, stature of the administrator so uh, the, that's why those have been presented to you this time rather than the traditional addendum that said these terms are all in addition to the teacher's contract which they didn't have so makes sense were they were some of them two-year terms i thought i saw somewhere were they all one on the, uh, the not, not on the not on the principles like on julie's and that kind of thing they should be one year contracts. okay but i thought they were all one <coughs> Any further questions for Mrs. Vance on the administrative contracts? In that case, is there a motion to approve the administrative contracts? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the administrative contracts, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Information analysis, adoption of the 2019-2020 calendar. There has been some, I won't say concern or consternation, but some questions about this. Jana has 
information here, and I know RCTA is here too to talk about it if we want to, or as a board, if you feel more comfortable tabling this until the study session and doing an you know, October meeting at, in the evening, we can do that as well. So, would you as a board prefer that she be able to go through this with RCTA, or would you rather we table it until study session next week so we can go over that in more detail? Why don't we table it? Did I need a motion to table it? I make a motion that we table make, Sandy made a motion that we table the adoption of 2019-2020 calendar. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of tabling the 2019-2020 calendar, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. Uh, TCU financial service agreement for two years. Now, on that note, if RCTA, if you guys would like to leave, I'll give you guys a chance to leave. I don't want you to have to sit through this. You're more than welcome to stay just like we do everybody else, but I know that's what you were here for, so. And I can work with Clint, our representative, for Monday's meeting at 9 o'clock to when I know that we're doing a <coughs> walkthrough of Columbia, and so I'll work with Jason to coordinate that and then have RCTA present at that table or a representative present to answer questions and give information as well since we tried to all work collectively with athletics, with principal, with this association, so. And it has nothing to do with the work anybody, no. whether RCT or you put into it. It's a matter. We want to make sure as a board sure. we get it right for the families sure. as best we can. So. This proposed calendar had some significant changes from what we've done before, and that doesn't make it bad or wrong. It just means that it needs to some be thought. vetted right. on our end as well. We are responsible we, to our constituents. But, well, and we know that it's had a lot of thought going into it. Sure. We're not to take away from that. But. <coughs> the TCU financial service agreement for two years. So I think it's important too, um, with prospective members, that there's also a financial committee and that Steve and Brad serve on that committee and that we had the opportunity to sit down and go through different opportunities. And one of the first questions that was asked is in the recent past we switched to TCU, have had great customer service, great information. Um, they've been wonderful to work with. Um, they came to us, did a presentation. Uh, Steve was there and Brad was there as well went through information and contracts and I think as a financial team within central office as well as the financial committee and I'd like for you gentlemen to, to share as well. We were most comfortable with the two year proposal at the 2.05% rate. Um, we've got the whole proposal here. They, um, they offered for full transparency, they offered a longer term contract. It's, Kind of scary with the change in interest rates and things that can happen locally and with school financing and, and all of those pieces coming in together to, to be locked into something uh, a longer period than that. But I think that we were all most comfortable, at least from central office, with the, with the two-year contract. And I would appreciate your sharing. Or so maybe Todd could share with us how, how did you compare the fixed versus variable and come up with the, the 2.05 choice as opposed to variable? Well, or we could do, yeah, we can do either. We were just looking at the two-year. Versus five, versus yeah, 10. exactly. And I, Steve, you're welcome to hop in on this if you want. We looked, they were offering us two, five, and 10-year higher rates, obviously, with 10-year. But at the same time, there's a component to this, a customer service. They've always been great with us. However, that's a pretty good fixed rate for our accounts. And we felt, we talked about it at the study session, that we didn't really want to go 10-year because that locks us in for a long time. And rates can fall, or they can go up. But that's something we can revisit later on. A two-year term gives us the best rate we get with some flexibility as well. Steve, did you want to add into that or disagree with that? Or? No, I was just going to see what if we uh, what was if we could calculate a, a spreadsheet or anything to take a look at what variable would look like. I think the discussion was I think the biggest part of the discussion was the flexibility, you know, being able to reevaluate that two-year and. and Oh, no, so we took two, but we got a choice of, is it two fixed or two variable? Fix was it not, Jana? Yes. Believe I'll have to, I can forward those spreadsheets to you. Okay. That information that they, the packet from the study session. Yeah, the packet included, we could, we could two, five, and ten, so we right, took two, right. but underneath two, you have an option of either choosing a fixed or choosing a variable. Steve, on page three, study you, session. Yeah. Scott, if you could scroll yeah. down to page three. Because we talked about that. It has session. the, there's the chart with the two, five, and ten year with fixed and variable. So according to TCU, the variable yeah. based on our July 2018 ending balance would be 1.81%. And by the difference, it's fluctuated, but that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. I think that, that, was, that was 
the, the risk factor that we were concerned about was not only the flux, which is the difference in the spreadsheet and that information, but also then taking it out longer than the two years. Rates can always go up and they can always go down and fix. Obviously, it's like your mortgage on your home's the land, okay? If you want the lowest rate, you can get there. But here we want the highest rate we get for the most amount of money we can make. Since it's starting below what the fixed is right now, and that's that's relatively significant below. All right, what was our rate? Was it one point? Or was it point eight? Was our last? So we've gone up almost a percent. Yeah, they didn't even say we get above two when we're talking right. about it, so. Of course, they get more stability from our accounts the longer we go out. But as a conservative board, we wanted to look at it from a lower option years rate. So we're making money, but still being conservative to the point where we have flexibility after two years. Did we go to other local or local banks to talk to them about doing this too? Not, not. That would be a request round. for that proposal. That was the last round, right. and that we got a, re a request uh, just a year and a half, right. 16 or 18 months ago, and went through all of that, and this was a significant uh, But I want to make sure difference. that we did ask local. I knew that was the request for proposal. Yep. was 18 months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And of course, to be clear too, this is for our accounts that, basically the accounts that Todd just went over, most of them here. Very but liquid. we just recently signed on with First Federal, for the most part, to hold our construction funds, which is the best our bond. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Janet? <coughs> or for Todd? I do have a question on the fee schedule, and I don't know if you've had a chance to really look that over. So for the checks deposited, do they really charge us 12 cents for every check that we deposit? Because I bet we get a lot of checks. We do, but I have a, a machine in my <coughs> office that I can do the deposit. So it has to go to their office right. in order for us to be charged for it. Okay, those. so if you do the deposit, Julie, then we don't get charged. Okay. Every now and then there's a check. I mean, once, once or twice a month there's a check that won't go through the system, but it doesn't happen very often. Okay. Well, I was just picturing like lunch sure. money checks or, yeah. you know, book order yeah. checks or whatever. Yeah, after school, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Jim? Okay, so we have a choice. What is your recommendation? The fix. The fix to you. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to assume yeah. anything. Based on our discussions of that day and information presented. So based on a motion, I'm going to ask for a motion upon your recommendation <coughs> to a two-year fixed rate at 2.05%. Is there a motion for that? Yes, do I have to say all that? There's a motion by Sandy for a two-year fixed rate at 2.05%. Is that correct? There you go. Motion by Sandy. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the TCU financial service agreement for two years, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. First reading of various NEOLA policies. Okay, so we have eight policies here to go through. These were discussed in more in depth at our study session. Um, those study sessions are open to the public and so you're always welcome to come to them. The next one is next Monday. At Columbia, correct? At Columbia, Columbia will do a walkthrough and see the new preschools that are launched and in full motion. And it's it's gravy, you know, yeah. hot little peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is um, policy 2271. This is about um, college and university programs. Most of these were policies that we just needed to double check that our policy was lined up with what our practice was going on. And so most of these were ones that Janet and Adam looked through to double check on that for us. And so um, not looking at major changes, but um, this first, this 2271 um, is about dual credit courses and who's allowed to teach them. And that is something that was a, a relatively new state law a couple of years ago. 2421 career and technical education programs along that same line. 
5460 graduation requirements 5540 um, this is about this this one was a little bit more involved this is about um, interrogation of students and what we would like as a board to set for who is allowed to be involved um, when the police uh, and Child Protective Services or Child Protective Services come to interview a student. And so we have elected to request that the agency inform a parent unless the parent is the target in the, of the investigation. And when Child Protective Services states a legitimate purpose for questioning or examining a student while the student is entrusted to the corporation, the principal or designee shall be present throughout the proceedings unless ordered not to um, by the agency or court of law. So while they are in our care, we would like a principal present, as is lawful. So we are proposing that. 6111, <clears throat> it's setting internal control standards. And that one, we were setting uh, that it would be reported to the state if we have a discrepancy of $500 in any fund. We had a choice of whether it be a percentage or a hard dollar amount. We chose a set dollar amount and we chose $500. 6152 is student fees and charges. And so that is setting um, when what amount we will refund. For instance, what if somebody is paid for a textbook and they withdraw a little earlier or something like that, we will recommend or we are recommending that we state it as $5 or more. So if somebody has a dollar left in their account, we aren't going through that process to refund it. Um, 8510 is a wellness policy, and so updating our wellness policy, there are several items that we checked on there about nutrition, uh, physical activity, and the like um, that we are instructing to have as part of our wellness program. And 8606, which uh, bus drivers and self cellular cellular telephone use. It lines up with our current bus driver handbook. Our bus drivers are allowed to carry their cell phones, their personal cell phones. However, they must not be on them. They must not have them in their hand or use them in any way unless they were in an emergency. And in that case, they would be pulled over. And, used. and so that is what our policy also <coughs> So this is just our first reading. So these that are not adopted tonight, but if anyone has any and they will be available on our website. Yeah, Scott and I, that, that's always our Tuesday after our morning getting all of those posted and online, so we'll take the time to do that tomorrow. Any questions okay. for Jenny on the first reading of those policies? Is there a motion to approve the first reading of the NEOLA policies as given on the agenda? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the first reading of those policies, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. Then other business, superintendent business. First off, it's your show, but I want to inject here if we could, please. Absolutely. There's been some questions from the public about Jana's licensure and things like that. And since we have the Sentinel here and RTC4 here, this way we can hear it right direct from her and she can tell exactly what's going on with her licensure and where yeah, she's at. And so. I've got all the supporting documentation. So when I was, first of all, a little bit of history on licensure to be licensed or to uh, even uh, take on a superintendency, you do not have to even have an education background. You can have a license in business or whatever. So um, what I brought to the board was a master's at that time, a master's in English, a master's in counseling and a master's in building level leadership. When I was hired, one of the first things they asked me to do was to make sure that I continued my education and at least at a minimum got my specialist license. And then if interested, moving on to my doctorate. So I have got that information here with transcripts if anybody would like to see it. And then um, you have to go through um, CPR licensure. I've got my copy of that certificate, suicide prevention. Two of the things that maybe the public isn't aware that you also have to go through, I'm just starting my fifth year, you have to have three years of evaluation, evaluation ratings that have to be either effective or highly effective. I've met that, 
But then there are also um, additions to the superintendent's license and you can, I printed out the Elvis sheet that you can add additional documentation to. And so one of the things that was requested was that I become as well grounded in budget, school finance, those types of things coming from an English background. Clint and I kind of laugh when we have those meetings. We go back and forth on that. So IASBO also provides certification. And IASBO is the Indiana Association. Association of School Business Officials. And so um, getting my certification to add to that licensure in uh, uh, budget, school budget, school finance, um, human resources, those types of things. So I've been taking those certification courses, which at times is very time consuming, but as you have transitions in the business office, you wanna make sure that the district's covered and that people understand and that teachers understand. So I've been seeking that certification. Then the last thing is they always ask that you reapply 45 days before the expiration. So I called and they will allow me to apply before that 45 days if the board so it chooses, but I wouldn't have those certifications and endorsements from my ASBEL, which is something that we were working towards in regards to that. Uh, the original agreement was once I became uh, qualified to receive that license, that that would be the increase and that's all of the information that's presented here. The other I was trying to do to support the district to make sure that I understood finances when we make these changes that we can go through the funding that certification and have those endorsements as well for Rochester schools. Would the board like to add any comments to this? I like to say that there it was a, a previous board that hired Gina. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we've been through two elections since then, and she's done a wonderful job of continuing on with the education that that hiring board asked her to do, <coughs> balancing that and. You have completed your education doctorate without doing the defending a dissertation. So that's why we don't call her doctor yet until she goes and defends that dissertation. But I could, I just have it yet. Well, I'm that's in balance. That's which it, it, it depends upon the direction of the board, and the board has not directed you to devote the time necessary to defend that dissertation. And so you've kept up your licensure. But just for the record, she has met all requirements for licensure as a superintendent. And she has the support of the board as that superintendent. We want to do it publicly with both the Sentinel and RCTC four, so there is no. We know how things can be blown out of proportion or talked and I've about. I've got everything here, transcripts and everything. If anybody wants to see. But you have our full support. Thank you. Next thing is, and I won't. You know, I'll wait to the public comment. This is sure. I want to just a uh, reminder that next week we start fall break. It's hard to believe we're about nine weeks into this, so we have uh, fall break coming up. But I wanted the gentleman just to take a very quick opportunity. One of the challenges from the board was to um, try to expand our enrichment activities, remediation activities. That was one of the challenges that was given to me, so we've been working on that. So, Jason, if you can just very quickly share those opportunities coming up over fall break, and we'll just... We've got uh, three enrichment opportunities, uh, two of which we've joined with uh, Riddle to do. Uh, we're gonna do a Thistleberry Farms trip. Um, last I checked, I think we've got about 40 students signed up for that. Uh, we also have a uh, bowling enrichment activity. Uh, tried to keep something, a couple of activities local so parents could bring their kids in. Um, and the, the uh, we're limited on space at the bowling activity, but last I checked, we were about four students short of having that completely maxed out. And then um, we're gonna do some uh, two swimming enrichment activities where we're gonna open the pool up for uh, K through uh, fifth grade students. And uh, they will um, have an opportunity to come in uh, just for an open swim. And then in the spring, we're gonna try if we can uh, to actually do swimming lessons for kids that actually need the lesson part. Uh, <coughs> the challenges there become lifeguards uh, when we do that but it was also a, a thought for us to be able to utilize our, um, our, the resources that we have. So, uh, and then the last I checked on that, um, we are pretty well maxed, one of our sessions is completely maxed out uh, and the other session still has a few openings and we have until the end of the week to get all that stuff in and whatever you've got. So, yep, the only addition that Riddle has, you know, like Jason said, we're going with the bowling and swimming together and those are pretty close to being filled and then we always do our uh, Indiana Dunes field trip with the Albanese Gummy Bear Factory, and that is reaching capacity as well. So we are at 51, and we shut that down for uh, supervision reasons and transportation. So looking good. Awesome. 
Uh, we um, have on Tuesday of fall break, we'll be going to the Burton Nature Preserve Walk and having a scavenger hunt. Um, that one's free. Then on Thursday, last uh, fall or spring, we did a, a uh, escape room. And so we are going to bring that back and we're going to go on Thursday. We're going to go to Peru instead of Mishawaka, which drops the price by $10 a kid. So hopefully it'll be more cost effective. And so that'll be about $20 a kid. There's actually a connection with one of our students there, so we may get it cheaper, but right now we got it down to 20. We may get it down to 15. So that's what we have planned at the middle school. Uh, we're taking a trip to the Indianapolis Children's Museum. And then we also have a mediation at each of the levels that, that uh, principals and counselors will be talking to teachers about. And then just very quickly, um, I want to thank everybody for their support in the construction effort. I know that it displaces teachers, and then we too are getting ready to take that even a step further. We met for about two and a half hours today to talk about carpeting across the district and where we are uh, so that the public is aware the bids for the uh, baseball press box will go out later this week, so we're anxious and eager to get that started and rolling. Um, and, uh, then we will be putting the final plans on our weight room, working very closely with the athletic departments <coughs> and teachers from uh, the high school, as well as some of those coaches very, very closely. They, I know that they've done some site visits with other schools and we're very, getting very comfortable and very excited about that weight room and what that's going to look like. And so um, you will see those bid consecutively uh, with the weight room, or I'm sorry, the press box being this week the weight room being about two weeks out, two, two or three weeks out, and then the next thing that you will see, we'll see that carpet bid and, and design process going out, hoping to actually start areas of the district as early as the spring break. So all of that going on in addition to everything else we do daily. Uh, do we ever have to turn anybody down for enrichment activities when we're on fall break? Um, we, I mean, we, we're limited to how many lanes we've got and things like that. Um, and then, you know, with the swimming, uh, you have to have a certain number of, of lifeguards per, per student, which if anybody out there has a li uh, lifeguard <laughs> licensure and would be interested in helping out, please uh, contact me or uh, Luke Bernacki. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, there's some limiting factors. Um, this year, we, we may have to, but um, we'll wait and see where we're at at the end of the week. And so the moral of the story is if you want your children to go on these, get in touch with you guys as soon as possible. Yeah, we sent, we sent this stuff out a month ago. I mean, we tried to push it out as early as we could. We had to wait on some logistical pieces to make sure that we could, could feasibly do some of the activities. And then we've got some other activities planned for like spring, and, and we've got some ideas for maybe some smaller group type stuff. You know, things that we've you guys have talked about. We've, we've looked at it. We've got a fairly long list of ideas, and we're going to rotate them around. But on some of them, like swimming and things like that, uh, you know, if we can continue to have those, you know, every every break, if we're filling it up, I mean, there's really no cost to the students and the parents. They just bring their kids, and then we take care of the rest. It's a pretty good activity uh, for them, and it, it utilizes our, our facility. So um, we'll we'll visit that again. But we do this this round and, and see where we're at. One last thing I want to touch back, reference the licensure too. Jenna offered to show everybody whatever they want to see. We don't make teachers do that, and we as a board are not going to make you do that. We are confident in your licensure and what you've done, so don't feel like you have any okay. obligation to do so. You answer to the board. Try to be transparent. So. Um, that, any more superintendent's business? No, just the offer stands. I know that we cover a lot. We do a lot. There's a lot behind the scenes, so Please, if you want to set aside that time, I'd be honored to go through any of that, especially with a lot of changes coming down the pipe with ESSA, with diploma track types, with funding going from five funds down to three funds. There's a lot going on, and it's very fast-paced, and the more eyes and ears we have on that, the, the less likely we are to make mistakes or errors, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay, for the public comment portion of this, I'll start off with, I notice we have most of our candidates here, I think, with the exception of one. Tom, last year introduced, or not last year, has always introduced candidates in the past. Would that be appropriate to do so at this meeting? It's up to the board. Board it's chair. Board. Mm -hmm. Is there any objection to introducing the candidates? <clears throat> okay, in that case, first to come, Jennifer Smith is up for re-election. 
I'll go alphabetically. I see Gloria Carvey back there. I see Cotton. It's not a place to make a statement, of course, but I want to give you the benefit of I'm waving. I'm um, waving. <laughs> back there. And I see Joe Murphy back there. I do not see Mr. Dave Dolphus. And I believe those are our only candidates for school board, correct? Uh, Tom Schwank is the incumbent in Richland Township. And right. he is opposed. And then Fred McLaughlin is running against him for that position. So. Uh, Public comment. We'll open up the board, uh, the meeting to any public comments. Anybody have come, Mr. Charles? Sorry, I, I know I was late. I would have talked about this earlier, but on <clears throat> October 3rd, which is the Wednesday right before fall break, we would like to invite the board um, and maybe even anybody running for the board. At 1.30, we have our Champions Together Wiffle Ball game planned down at the uh, Youth Baseball Park. Uh, we're planning to fill that thing with all of our students. We had one practice already, and it was a really good time. So if you guys are available, there'll be a root beer float waiting on you because all our kids will get a root beer float, and then we'll get them in the stands, and we're actually going to go inside the fence and really kind of create an atmosphere for them and play about a 30 to 40 minute wiffle ball game. Um, just got my uniforms ordered, and thank goodness somebody likes me, and we're going to get them on time. So that's uh, what we have going on. We're really excited about it. Are you playing? Me? Yeah. No. Good. We don't see you pull a hand. <laughs> Any other public comment or is there a public comment before we uh, turn the meeting? There's no public comment. We'll consider the meeting adjourned. Is there any other business to discuss, board members? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.